Jason Molina was a 1992 graduate of Admiral King High School. At an early age, Jason developed a love of music and began playing trumpet and then guitar. Throughout high school, he was involved in soccer and the jazz band as he nurtured his true love of music. In 1988, during high school, Jason was a charter member of the heavy metal group, The Spine Riders, winning a local battle of the bands that led to studio time and eventually a contract with Secretly Canadian Records. Following graduation, Jason attended Oberlin College where he earned a Bachelor of Arts degree in art history in 1996. He had a short-lived real job as a curator at the Chicago Museum of Art. However, in 1993, Jason admitted to a friend, I want to be a rock star. Jason came to prominence as an indie alternative singer-songwriter during the late 1990s when he wrote, recorded, and performed as Songs Ohio and later as Electric Magnolia Company. Often referred to as a visionary and creative genius, Jason created a remarkable song catalog of stark and heartbreaking music that left a lasting impression on those who heard it. A prolific performer, Jason toured the US, Europe, and Australia between 1997 and 2009, creating a diverse and loyal fan base that exists to this day. Jason's untimely death in 2013 at the age of 39 was reported by the New York Times, Rolling Stone, Entertainment Weekly, and NPR. Lorraine is deeply embedded in Jason's music. As a 24-year-old, he told an interviewer, I grew up in a burned-out shipbuilding and steel-making town. Lorraine is profoundly important to my music. It is the environment where I learned to walk away from the darkness. Is it, a place, it is a place of water and storms and falling red sky and lightning. I learned to write music there about the world because out there it was immense and sudden. I learned that misery is not to capture but to learn about. Lorraine and I have an unspoken agreement to always remain in each other's lives. It is a hard place. Welcome home, Jason Molina. And please welcome Jason Molina to the Lorraine Schools Alumni Association Distinguished Alumni Hall of Fame. <laughs> Excepting for Jason is his dad, who's one of the best teachers I ever had the opportunity to see in a classroom, Mr. Bill Molina. You with your Eagle Scouts, yes, too. Did. Yes. Oh. We go back a ways. <laughs> yes, we, yes, we do. I'm extremely honored to speak on behalf of my son, Jason, as he is inducted into the Lorraine School's Distinguished Alumni Hall of Fame. As far as his professional accomplishments go, as a proud father, I'm happy to uh, say that they were all, they were uh, many, and those can be found uh, on Google. Today, though, I'd like to spend most of my time, brief time up here sharing my memories of his life. Jason was born in Oberlin. Uh, by the way, uh, we, he was born in a blizzard. Uh, we had to drive from here to Oberlin, and my wife went into labor, and um, 18, 18 minutes after we got to the hospital, he was delivered. And Jay's uh, mother was uh, the an anesthesiologist. Oh my goodness. Um, <laughs> um, my wife and I, uh, before Jason was born, uh, uh, exposed uh, Jason to uh, classical uh, and Neil Young music. Uh, so I guess it isn't surprising that he had an interest in music from a very early stage. His brother Aaron was born when Jason was three years old. Just two years later, uh, five-year-old Jason and I hiked 20 miles together, and I still remember my little buddy carrying his backpack with him the whole way, never complaining. We also loved to go fishing in Lake Erie. In fact, we were together so much that friends uh, used to nickname him Little Shadow. Jason, meanwhile, just called me Pops. The year that 
Jason turned six. His sister Ashley was born, and she's here today with my granddaughters, um, and which was right about the time that Jason got his first guitar. By the way, he got his guitar from a teacher from Lorraine High, Don Willits, uh, and um, it was a Fender Acoustic. Um, <clears throat> That's also the same year that Jason got his first taste of fame. My wife Karen had, uh, man, had made a uh, pair of pajamas uh, in the Cleveland Brown uh, colors, and uh, we decided to go to uh, the Woolly Bear Festival together. We had intended just to go as spectators, not as participants, but uh, the crowd, uh, they saw him and they said, uh, Put him on the wagon and let him be in a parade, and we did. And then the, we had to chase the wagon down the road <laughs> because we didn't know where it was going. <laughs> and he was waving. He was just uh, having a good time. And it took it up to the stage where they were judging, and Dick Goddard was there, and Little John, and he became the Woolly Bear King. <laughs> uh, Despite uh, despite the fact that he is now he is now a king he was now a king, music remained the activity closest in his heart throughout his childhood. And by the age of seven, he was already playing chords on his guitar. He also started going to school, uh, school related activities with me at a very early age, including archaeological digs, space camp in Florida, and the Sierra Ranger camping trips. He quickly became a real history buff, especially in connection with the Civil War, and we did plenty of relic hunting together. Jason was in the first academy class at Hawthorne Middle School, and I was his science teacher. In fact, I was the teacher of all three of my children. During high school, he played football, soccer, and was in the jazz band. He worked at Salenti's, the pizza place, uh, for a few years, and during his junior year, um, he was a foreign exchange student uh, and went to England, living in London, a place that became important to him again later on in his life. His first band was the Spine Riders, and they won the Battle of the Bands in Lorraine County. Oh my goodness, I remember those days of practice out in the garage. Whoa. <laughs> Uh, after he graduated from Admiral King in 1992, he went on to graduate from Oberlin College as well with a degree in uh, antiquities. Jason then signed a contract with the uh, secure, Secretly Canadian where he recorded his music under the labels of Songs Ohio and Magnolia Electric Company. He wrote all of his songs and was a singer in the band. He never wanted to be a part of a big band, though. Instead, he wanted to create a personal connection each and every time he sang, and I believe he succeeded. I, I personally uh, attended some of the, his concerts, and he wanted to be able to reach out and touch the, the uh, fans, and, um, and it was just amazing. Um, during his professional music career, he wrote 16 studio albums, eight extended albums and plenty of singles. And he moved to London for a few years and toured most of the European countries with his band. His songs were played on television show One Tree Hill and in the movie, which is, uh, was put out, I think, last year, Hearts Beat Loud. It's, uh, I hope everybody can see that. It's, it's, uh, it's very interesting. After he died, um, oh, I'm sorry, then after a jam-packed but all too short life, Jason died in March 16, 2013 at, at the age of 39. There has been a biography written about him by Aaron Osman titled uh, Riding with the Ghost, which was taken from the title of one of his more popular books, I, I've Been Riding with the Ghost. After he died, he was honored on the David Letterman show and on the Jimmy Kimmel Live show, among other places. His former band members have uh, been uh, uh, going around the country in, uh, in performing concerts and uh, with his music. 
I also got to appear on the uh, Lorain County Community College radio station recently where they played Jason's music and I was able to uh, relate my memories about, about the music. Um, as I, as I look back on Jason's songwriting, I have many personal favorites. After all, I'm his father, my little shadow. But if I had to pick one line, then the one that resonates most with me is, hope dies last of all. After his death, NPR wrote about him and picked on, up on the theme saying that lingering thread of hope which survives in Molina's music is what I try to embrace in his music. It's the idea that the singer lived to process his hurt and put into all the beautiful meaning songs he could while he was still alive. I never thought the day would come when Jason's music could get any sadder, but here we are. Uh, I'll still celebrate it. And if you indulge me, I want to read one more thing from Rolling Stones magazine quoted. We were going to, we're going to miss Jason. He was generous. He was one of the kind. And he had a voice unlike any other. And uh, if you get a chance, and I would uh, hope you do, I go to YouTube and um, listen to some of his music. Um, it's different. <laughs> I have to admit, it's different, but it's different in a way that uh, you will become uh, familiar with it. Thank you. Jason was in my class the first year that I was a teacher at Hawthorne, the same year that his dad had him. 